Um, yes, water is a very precious resources, um, and, and we see it in, you know, every day in our life. So today I want to take a few minutes to uh, introduce you to um, the challenges uh, coming up with uh, the management of water uh, related to mining and metals. Um, you may not know, but before starting H2 Innovation and creating H2 Innovation in 2000, I was myself into the mining industry. I was um, managing, coordinating exploration campaign in Labrador and Peru, and very early I got exposed to the challenges in managing water for our exploration campaign. In Labrador, we had to manage water and bring you know, the water through pipes and holes, and, and we had to heat with electrical coil this water to avoid you know, the freezing of the water. On the other end, a few years later, doing exploration in southern Peru, um, where it's, the water is pretty rare at 3,000 meter high, uh, we had to hold water in trucks. And we were waiting for the trucks to bring this water uh, to conduct our exploration campaign. So, so very early indeed, I got exposed to the water uh, challenges. The water processes and, and the extraction processes from previous years to today have definitely evolved. So there's more and new technology involved in the extraction process. But one thing has remained for sure is that water is related to every single step of our extraction and refinery processes. We needed into our exploration campaign, we needed to uh, the flotation process, remediation, the dust minimization or management, uh, the workers facility. Um, the water is really needed everywhere. The good news is that today, with good technologies, with membrane filtration technologies and crystallizer, we can recycle this water up to 90%. So with good practices and proactive investment, we can come up with a more advanced solution. Now, what is strange about or different about this industry, so unlike any other manufacturing business, the mining exclusively relies on the location. And we spend a lot of dollars to confirm this location. We spend a lot of dollars to confirm the proven reserves. We spend a lot of dollars to define the site. But all the other industries, the manufacturing, for example, if you want to build a new pharmaceutical plant, you will look at the facility around the plant. You will look at the population. You will look at the public transport to uh, build your plan, you will look at how you can access power, the cost of electricity, the, the fiscal environment uh, before uh, building such, uh, such plant. But in the mining, I mean, you'll be building this in the middle of nowhere. And the discovery then uh, makes it even more challenging to bring additional resources. As you start the mining process or the exploration, you bring people in the middle of nowhere. So you'll need water for the camps. As you build the mine, then you will have obviously water related to the smelter or the refinery itself. And then obviously you will create you know, the tailings, the tailing ponds. We'll have to manage this water. And again, the water will have to be treated before rejected to the environment. But are we giving sufficient thoughts and time on how we're going to manage these resources? Unfortunately, we have been exposed to great opportunities, but Clients were coming to us very late in their process saying, oh, I, I, need, I need a water treatment plan for 5, 000, 5, 500 people that I need to move on this mine site. And when do you need this? In, in which year? Oh, we need it in six months. So it was obvious to me that you know, there was a lack of planning somewhere. So this morning, I want to share with you a couple of things um, that we should pay attention to. And before investing in mining, whether as an investor or as a developer of a project, we should pay attention to. So three important things or risks that we should look at. The first one is obviously the one related to your ability to generate revenue. So because there's tremendous amount of water required to the extraction process, so do you have the proper technology? So how can you mitigate the risk associated to the, um, to the manufacturing or extraction process? The second one is the one related to the people, your employees. As you move you know, these employees, again, in, in remote areas, <clears throat> and we're talking about camps of 400, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 people even that you move in pretty remote area, you need to provide them with 
water treatment systems, wastewater treatment systems um, that will provide them safe drinking uh, water. So the one related to health and safety risk is another important one uh, for the worker scam facility. Finally, the last one that I will address this morning is the one related to how are you managing your tailing water ponds, um, which represent a very important environmental risk and potentially reputational risk as well. So the first one or first case study I want to share with you this morning is a project where we got involved uh, for the mine um, Escondido mine in Chile. This, as you may know, is the largest copper deposit owned by Rio Tinto. In this case, to get the mine running, and we're hoping to get the, the plant going in uh, 2016, this will make the largest RO or desalination plant in the entire Latin America. So Rio Tinto invested to build a brand new desalination facility, a 220,000 cubic meter per day desalination plant. So this, to give you an example, is the, is the equivalent of uh, 500,000 people that you, will, you could deserve um, in, with water. So they got this mine going, they got this plan going, and the challenge, and to show you how critical and important water was and the scarcity of it, as well in southern Chile, was that we had to bring you know, this water up to 3,000 meter high in altitude through pipeline of 180 kilometers. So if you don't plan it properly in advance and you don't look at the resources you have around you uh, before you get going, you, you may get caught you know, with uh, unlikely or uh, pleasant investment to be done. So as we speak, we have two of our employees flying there in Chile to assist and collaborate on the commissioning phase of this desalination plant. But again, it's to show you the importance of proper planning uh, related to generation, their ability to generate revenue on this extraction process. Another one that I want to share with you is the project here in Ontario, a project we did a few years ago uh, for the client De Beers, um, was among the first, well, their, their first mining, uh, diamond mine in uh, northern Ontario. So um, this illustrates very well that De Beers, um, despite the fact that there is abundant water resources around this area, De Beers was not afraid to go beyond and above by investing into a water treatment plant. Um, for the workers. So in this case, we had to design uh, water treatment systems using membrane filtration technology that could adapt itself as the mining um, process or the life of the, of the mining project. As the, as the beers was expecting to get the groundwater contaminated with the mining operation, they asked us to be able to design the plant so that we could adapt adapted to condition from groundwater to surface water over the 15 years of the life of the mine. So again, we had to adapt ourselves, but it shows that for the beers, it was very important to make sure they were providing safe drinking water to their workers. Because imagine the cost of, of flying someone by helicopter in the middle of nowhere, then by plane back to Toronto to get ill you know, for um, e. coli contamination or diseases. So again, important risk, uh, health and safety risk, and again, associated to potentially even um, some uh, reputational risk. So this shows you know, the kind of uh, modular building that we brought on the camp, um, uh, containing all the uh, water treatment uh, facility. Now, Another interesting one that I want to share with you this morning um, is the one related to uh, tailing ponds. You may have heard about this uh, case study on Mount Poli. So a few, a few years ago, we received a mandate from Imperial Metal to, um, to build a water treatment plant uh, to process their water uh, for this large tailing pond. Um, quite significant in size, so we're talking about 24, cubic, uh, 24 million cubic meter of of waste that we had to manage over quite significant area uh, with contaminant with arsenic, copper, and selenium. Uh, so we use for that membrane process. But the interesting part is that we received the PO, it was about a $2 million PO, 
in June 2014. So we start immediately to get going because it was critical that we had to deliver this plant for November on the same year. So again, quite short notice to get going, but the client is paying $2 million, so let's get going. So immediately we get started on the engineering phase, provided the drawings, provided the submittals. And here's what I want to show you. On July, before we finished, we had just finished the engineering phase, and we had just started the procurement phase of the key and long lead items. Here's what happened. And look at the impact it had on the stock. In July, we saw the, the dam of the water pond you know, just collapse, creating a huge environmental catastrophe. So suddenly there was the lake just below, the Poly Lake, increased by 1.5 meter in three or four days. And 326 tons of nickel, 400 tons of arsenic, 177, 177 tons of lead were disposed into the environment. So obviously it, it caused a huge impact on their reputation, but it is definitely something that could have been planned in advance. Now, another example I wanted to share with you, which I believe is, is good practice, is the one related to the old plant Magnola, previously owned by Norenda, now Glencore. In this case, they have been proactive right from the beginning and invested into a proper uh, water treatment to uh, minimize or reduce the level of water contained into their pond. So in this case, we're using the water in a closed circuit. You know, we're using uh, membrane filtration, seawater reverse osmosis system to recycle the water and put it back into their process. Um, so they have been very proactive in doing it. They did it in the middle of uh, 2006 or so, uh, the investment, and still run today to, to keep the level of the pound at uh, low level. So as you can see, I mean, water is involved in every single uh, process and is implied in every single commodity you have. And strangely, um, in 1999, I decided to think about something else than mining because I was there in southern Peru looking for this porphyry gold system, but it was very, very inferred, if I can say. And at $290 an ounce, there was no way you know, we could make it you know, happen. The economy wasn't there, um, and, and we had to find other options. And when I look at this, to me it was obvious that despite the price of any commodities, um, water was the commodity number one required in every single process. So I founded H2O Innovation, and we can see that the investment done over the years um, paid off, and, and the industry is still investing tremendously into uh, water. So just for water systems, in 2011, um, the mining industry spent $2.3 billion. And today, um, the industry we're expecting in 2016 will spend $3.6 billion just for water treatment system. So it is growing, it is a fast growing market, and we're still expecting this to grow in the coming years. So a couple of takeaways. First, I mean, mining is very thirsty for water. And I think it's obvious, no matter what the commodity is, we need water in every single process. I think, obviously, looking at the event, the sad event of uh, Imperial Metal, um, we can acknowledge that prevention is better than cure. So water planning should be done in advance, um, and there is technologies out there uh, to, to help you with that. And there are three things to remember while you conduct your due diligence, whether you are an investor or, or you are a developer, um, should be on, on three important risks to mitigate. The first one related to your ability to generate revenues. Um, so the one related to the supply of water for your operations and the quality of supply of water you bring. The second one will be related to your workforce, your people. Protect your people with proper and safe drinking water and wastewater um, and make sure that you're compliant with the legislation uh, where you're operating. And finally, the last one, is the one related to uh, tailings. How can you reduce or manage better your water tailing ponds? So strategic 
planning should definitely incorporate the water issues into your business. I mean, it will definitely, you know, maximize the opportunity for you, but also minimize the risk associated to your operation. So thank you very much.